Now welcome back ladies and gentlemen and thank you so much once again for watching this video. Please subscribe just in case you are here for the first time and also you can press the notification bell so that you can automatically receive the notifications from YouTube immediately I post a video here on this channel and to my subscribers I really want to appreciate you so much because without your support then this channel cannot be where it is currently so feel very much welcome as you watch and I really don't take your support for granted. Now yesterday the International Criminal Court Prosecutor by the name Karim Khan acknowledged that he had received reloading us or the Azimio Lomoja Alliance letter which was basically sent by Relo Denga's lawyer by the name Paul Mwangi. And immediately Karim Khan received this letter from Relo Denga's lawyer. He decided that he was not going to launch any investigations on Relo Denga's accusations, but instead Karim Khan demanded an apology from both parties, Relo Denga and President William Ruto, uh, outlining the importance of a peaceful country. And it was revealed that from Relo Dinga's letter, first of all, Relo Dinga was demanding that the ICC to conduct a very serious probe on the conduct of the police and the Inspector General of Police during the previous mass actions uh, in some parts of the country. And Relo Dinga outlined some issues in that area, saying that first of all, the police used a lot of force and they were ordered by the Inspector General of Police on how to use a lot of force. Therefore, they ended up committing a lot of crimes, punishing Relo Dinga's supporters during the mass actions. And according to Relo Dinga, he has indicated that in the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya, it is the right for the people of the Republic of Kenya to conduct uh, the peaceful demonstrations and street protest. And in the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya, Power is actually within the ordinary Wananchi, not the leaders who are elected to represent the people here in Kenya. Secondly, Relo Dinga is saying that the police during the mass actions actually were in plain clothes or they were in civilian. Therefore, it was really hard to indicate uh, who is actually the police and uh, just ordinary people who uh, who were pretending to be police officers during the mass action. Therefore, they ended up mistreating and punishing Relo Dinga's supporters in the Azimio Lomoja Alliance. And also, Relo Dinga was demanding a very serious probe on the killings during the street protest, whereby the larger parts of Kisumu County and uh, Seya County, and also that student was shot dead by the police uh, the Mason Maseno University student and basically these issues that were raised or they were against the humanity that were raised by Reila Monodinga during that letter. So basically here Reila Dinga is demanding the ICC to con was demanding the ICC to conduct a very serious probe on Inspector General of Police Jafet Kome and also the police conduct during the mass action. Secondly Relo Dinga is accusing Rigadi Gashagwa, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya in that letter, for being linked to uh, the raid of Uhuru Kenyatta's uh, Northlands farm. And according to Relo Dinga, uh, the Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa was the one who launched all the happenings there and was among them, whereby uh, they touched reloading or Uhuru Kenyatta or they set on fire Uhuru Kenyatta's farm and therefore also a total of 1,400 sheep was seized and also the destructions of property uh, during uh, that time, during that event, during that occasion. And reloading is saying that he has proof that Deputy President Rigadi Gashako was the one involved in the issue of the Uhuru Kenyatta's Northland farm. But the main shocking thing here is that when Relo Dinga was accusing Rigadi Gashagwa on Uhuru Kenyatta's Northland farm, because I still remember very well that when that was happening, also Relo Dinga's property was being destroyed in Relo Dinga's company, Spectre Gas Company. But Relo Dinga never indicated that 
in this letter, he only indicated Uhuru Kenyatta's issues in this letter. So you can basically tell how this shocking is. Thirdly, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ray Odinga in this letter is accusing President William Ruto of two things. First of all, he's saying that William Ruto contravened or he was contravening the constitution of the Republic of Kenya and also is accusing William Ruto for attempt uh, to uh, assassinate Raila Molo Odinga during the mass action process. And Raila Odinga has indicated in that letter that his vehicle that he was using during the mass action process was showered with uh, several rounds of ammunition and is accusing William Ruto for that, that he attempted to assassinate him. But here yeah, you can clearly tell that Raila Odinga is accusing three people in that letter. First of all, he is accusing uh, Jafet Kome, the Inspector General of Police and the police during the mass action, he has also launched an accusation to the Deputy President Rikaiti Kashagwa linked to Uhuru Kenyatta's Northland farm and also is accusing President William Ruto here for uh, a try for attempt to assassinate him and contravening the constitution of the Republic of Kenya. So I'm just going to give you only two reasons as to why the International Criminal Court rejected the Lordinger's letter and decided not to launch any investigations. First of all, Raila Odinga lacked proof in his accusations and according to Karim Khan or the International Criminal Court, Raila Odinga's accusations are basically political engineered. These are only politics because Raila Odinga wants to use this to achieve a certain political objective. And in my considered opinion, ladies and gentlemen, it's actually a, a bad move. It was actually a bad move for Ray Lodinga to go ahead to the ICC, considering the fact that, first of all, the reason as to why Ray Lodinga lost the previous 2013 general elections is because he was pushing that agenda for William Ruto and the former head of state, Uhuru Mweke Kenyatta, to be arrested, to be charged with the, to the ICC. You know, it was like, it was uh, one of Raila Odinga's political strategy to win the previous 2013 elections, whereby if Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto will be arrested, then he will have the, that opportunity to emerge as the president of the Republic of Kenya. But that did not happen. And after that, Uhuru Kenyatta uh, actually, they ended up in a handshake whereby they forgave each other and the rest happened on how it happened. But this time round, when Raila Odinga comes out public, you know, at least that time, Raila Odinga actually denied all those accusations that he was the one who took William Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta to the ICC. But this time round, Raila Odinga has appeared to the public that he's the one taking or accusing these leaders to the ICC. At least, if Raila Odinga would have just taken these matters to the courts of law here in Kenya and solve all these issues instead of going to the ICC. Secondly, ladies and gentlemen, the reason as to why the ICC did not lodge any investigations on Raila Odinga's accusations is because Raila Odinga's accusations failed to meet, to meet the standards of the ICC cases. ICC cannot probe into the issues of uh, demonstrations, uh, street protest. Instead, the ICC or the International Criminal Court only deals with very, very serious crimes against humanity, like genocide, you know, those kind of issues, not the demonstrations across the country. You know, that is the main reason or one of the reasons as to why the ICC did not uh, uh, not launch any investigations on Ray Rodinger's accusation. And thirdly, ladies and gentlemen, I personally think that the ICC was actually had uh, some accusations towards Ray Rodinger. You know, Ray Rodinger, when he was calling out for this street protest and the mass actions across the country, the ICC had received those 
allegations from the Kenya Kwanza Alliance and also from the international community. So basically, the ICC was observing, was monitoring very closely each and every political move that was conducted by Raila Mododinga. So that was it, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what you think. Let me hear your thoughts on the comment section below. Otherwise, I don't have much. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, my name is Jason. Bye-bye.